What's going on, YouTube? It's your man, King Bishop. And I am, of course, as you see, in the truck. Got on the bed back there, the plastic off the mattresses. You know, trash bag right there from getting everything situated. But I am in um, the truck. Oh, that wasn't a good idea. My bad. So, I'm in the truck, um, getting it straightened up. It's a uh, Wednesday afternoon, the 20, Wednesday evening, the 25th, Wednesday night now. Been at this for a little while, getting everything situated, getting everything put away. Um, for the most part, I did everything but clothes. So, folding, well, hanging up clothes is like my last, my last, I hate it. But, anyway, I'll get it done. Um, I still have uh, one more day of orientation today um, just to give you an insight got in in the morning um, did some more trip planning with the low board um, going over how to plan trips and um, set yourself up so that you don't run out of hours or whatever and how to book loads in uh, order and how to look for loads in order and how to manipulate the load board some more um, then at, uh, around 10 o'clock had a call with the safety manager where, um, other orientation, owner operated orientation classes from other parts of the country, um, were in on the call and the safety manager who is over the owner operators went over some safety things and, um, that was about two hours. So after that, went to lunch, chilled out. A little 30 minute lunch break or whatever which is it's crazy it's like you can sit in the classroom 30 minutes and feel like two hours and then you can go out of the classroom for 30 minutes and it feel like five it's crazy but did that uh after lunch we come back and immediately as soon as we get back from lunch start pulling you for your road test now <clears throat> the way it was set up was the first day when i, I took you guys to look at the truck with me uh, that was the first day i saw the truck and that's also the last time i was in the truck um, because it was in the shop, I didn't get to start it. Uh, I didn't get it to let it run. I did, you know, do a basic pre-trip of it. But as far as going through, taking it on test drive, seeing it how it ro rode and making sure everything was done, I didn't get a chance. I didn't give a chance to start it up. I didn't know how the truck sounded. For all I know, it didn't start. So and that's because mainly it was in a closed shop. You know, you don't want to have fumes all in the air inside of a closed area. You'll kill everybody there through carbon monoxide. So... I uh, didn't get a chance to try it. Um, I do have a diesel APU. I did not get a chance to try that, which is something I wanted to do. But diesel APUs are loud, and they kick out some nasty smoke and fumes until they get situated. So didn't get to try that out. Um, so after lunch, went to the, do the road test. It was the first time I had been able to turn the key. Now, I didn't even have keys to the truck until it was time to go to take the road test. The shop still had the keys. So... Had to go into the shop, grab the keys, get in the truck. The uh, road test instructor said, hey, you know, I'll meet you over at the trail lot. You know, get into, you know, do a basic free trip of the truck, prop the hood, make sure everything's okay. Meet me in the trailer yard. So I did that. Let it run, let it warm up because it is, right now, it's only uh, 44 degrees. But at that time, I mean, at, at noon, it was only maybe like 48, 40 degrees. It was still cold. And so I wanted to let the truck run up. I mean, warm up, I'm sorry. So I let the truck warm up, <clears throat> meet him over the trailer yard. Um, this company has a very, very specific way of uh, doing everything. So I hooked up to the trailer, did a small road test. Um, I did have two blemishes on my road test exam. They check everything. One of which, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I got two points, uh, which is still the lowest point total out of everybody in my class. but. I got one point because the uh, road test person said I did not look to my blind side when I made a left turn at a at a stoplight. I don't know. I don't even know what left turn he was talking about. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, well. And secondly, I had to run over a curb. Now, they allow you to run over two curbs anyway, so I wasn't really worried about it. But I was on the main road, four-lane road, um, local road, no divider. And I was going set to make a right turn. There was a car who, I guess, saw that I was turning right 
and attempted to try to jump across three lanes of traffic to make a left turn in front of me and saw cars were coming down the hill so I had to stop. So basically she stopped in the middle of the road. She backed up a little bit into the turn to the side street back towards the stop sign but she was still all the way in the road. So I kind of slowed down to almost like four miles an hour and I told the test guy, I said I'm about to run over this curb because I can't stop in this roadway someone runs to the back of me they're gonna say why were you stopped in the roadway to make a right turn so that's the first thing two um the young lady saw me and still didn't move backwards she didn't attempt to give me space so i knew i couldn't stop in the roadway i saw the curve there was no grass there there was no stop sign there no signs no no uh, fire hydrant um no property nothing there that could be damaged it was just a burnt curb so i would made the decision the best thing to do is get out of the road so i said hey Looked to my right, said, I'm gonna run this curve. I'm gonna run over this curve to get out of this road. He said, Well, you allowed two of them. And he said, I can't say I would do anything different. So I went ahead and I, I jumped the curve on purpose, did it slowly so that not to hurt the trail. Or I didn't do it with my truck, I'll never do it with my tractor, but um, I will do it with the trailer, you know. So I did that, came back to the yard, um, set up for my back, no pull ups, no issues. Got out and looked, of course, just to make it right got away from it got two points you are allowed um 25 points with a manual um transmission because they're judging shifting a lot and then with an automatic i believe you're allowed 15 points before you fail i got two so i was nowhere near failing and um <clears throat> like my classroom instructor said you know he said really when you go through things like that it's really up to the perception of the tester because you could have looked right but if you didn't turn your head um, and you weren't looking when they looked at you, they, it could be interpreted that you didn't look. Um, and I told him, I said, I don't care. It's two points. I mean, I can drive, I can back. I showed him that, um, I didn't have any issues with that at all. So and I don't have any issues with that. So, I um, got that done. And so, I, um, we finished up in the classroom doing, um, some testing, um, the computer work and everything finished up. Um, so I was allowed to, because when my drug testing, everything came back, hair follicle and drug testing. So I was able to go ahead and take possession of the truck, brought the truck back to the hotel. Uh, me and a bunch of the guys in orientation when I got something to eat. And then I got, did some more computer work, uh, finished up everything I can do here. And um, came back and set the truck up so that tomorrow, which is day four, which should be a half day or so, you know, hopefully get out soon um i'll be able to get out and um start pushing towards making some money so um that's what happened today um tomorrow from what i understand got a couple other people that will be coming in to talk um but classroom portion should be finished by 11 o'clock and then from that point you just got to finish up everything you need to do as far as computer testing and then um around that time we should be getting dispatches to pick up empty trailers um so for those of you who do not already know i'm going to tell you i am working for snyder national um every, most of you guys know i i don't know why i tried to hide it from you it, it doesn't make a difference to me <laughs> at this point um but i'm at snyder um i will not be doing a lot of promoting for snyder because like i told you guys before snyder doesn't pay me to recruit um as far as you may get recruitment bonuses, but I'm not a recruiter. I don't get paid full time to recruit. So that's all I'm working for. If you see me, you see me. Um, the information I'll be giving is about Snyder. Once again, if you watch my old Snyder review videos, I feel like <clears throat> Snyder is absolutely top three, if not number one. To me, they're number one, but I think they're top three of the best starter companies for new drivers. I feel like their training program is intense, um, it's thorough. It's um, it's very detailed. It's not rushed, and I feel like they, the instructors. Well, first of all, most ninety percent of all the instructors are drivers, still drivers. So, the insight they have with a lot of the nonsense they have to give you for company policy is also balanced by the real life experiences um, that they can produce and give to new drivers. Um, now I'm going to be processing over into the owner operator program. Um, and I feel the same way as far as that uh, orientation for me, like I told you guys yesterday, was it's fairly boring because I've been through this all. But had I not had been through 
uh, this training from Snyder themselves before, I think it would be very informative for me. Um, but so that the, so that the other new guys here are, are soaking it all in. It's a lot to them. It's a lot of information. It's a lot to digest. For me, it's not that way because I've been through it before. Not because it's childish or not because it's um it's minute or um, it's belittled. You know, it's not like they small talk you and treat you like a baby. They don't treat you like they treat the first guy, uh, the first the first time or the new drivers that are down three classrooms away. It's not spoon fed at all. Um, but there is information you have to be fed that is basics. They have to make sure you e-log because a guy who could be driving 20 years could have never used the e-log because they didn't become mandatory until when? Now? So you, you have to remember, so everybody doesn't have that experience. Every, some people have been driving 10 years, 20 years, and never been in their own truck. You have to give them some some knowledge. Some people have been owner-operators for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years and never used a low board. You know, so you have to rem remember there's different levels to everything from company driver to new driver to owner operator. Some people, no matter what the category of driver you've been, have not experienced some things. So that's what they did, and they did it very effectively. Tomorrow's my last day. I will bring a video update. This video will be dropping on Thursday, um, which will be my last day. I'm kind of a day behind. Um, and like I said, the reason why, and I'm going to make this quick, the reason why I was not telling you guys who I drove for, I wanted to make sure drug testing came back fine that um, I got in the truck fine, that I was able to get everything done. I was actually hired. I didn't have a big issue blow up where I cussed everybody out and they fired me on the spot. I had to make sure those things didn't happen. So um, that's why I waited. But you guys now know. So I'll be doing uh, more videos on them. And uh, I'll be letting you guys know specifically um, what the detail process is and just the minute details. I've been giving you kind of an overview of me. But I'll give you more details later. As always, appreciate y'all for watching, man. It's your man, King Bishop. Peace.